This is the place to be. This is the best race you will ever run. UTMB World Champion. 1300 meter climb. It is snowing up here. The hot weather has done me. Everyone's fighting their own demons now. Just look at that smile. I really want to quit. This is the story of UTMB 2023. From the shakeout run to the big dance and everything in between. The shakeout run was organised by Lloyd from Run For Adventure and he invited myself and Ben Parks along for the ride. We met at the church by the UTMB start line and it was great to see so many people. Right guys, first of all, I've got to thank all of you for coming. Uh, we're going to go on the running track, do a few loops of the running track. So no speed test there. No, you'll get injured, you'll get injured, don't. <laughs> but you don't want to tell me any tactics because you know we're racing, don't you? Yeah, well, you've got, you've got no chance. <laughs> it's your marathon PP. <laughs> right, that is a good point actually because uh, the first 8k is all flat, so he's going to be about six hours ahead of me before. It's been me and Jim Wormsley. Yeah. Tom Evans lagging behind because his PB is slower than mine. How, so. uh, yes. How, how are you feeling then? Uh, very nervous. Given last year? Given last year. As soon as we got over the top of that, that climb, which we didn't quite make it to, then I'll start to relax. <laughs> who are you? Sebastian from Slovenia. And uh, why are you here in Chamonix this week? Uh, to race CCC and enjoy running with Steven. <laughs> what time are you hoping for? Uh, 12, 12, between 12, 13. That's fast. This is Jeff Partridge, by the way. Uber, <laughs> ultra runner, Uber Zwifter as well. Yeah. If you've seen uh, me running on Zwift, you'll know I run with Jeff a lot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this young chap is uh, Jaco Swart, who yeah. uh, was our Fantastic crew and pacer on the North Downsway 100. Jacob, why are you out in Chamonix this week? Well, Friday morning, I'm starting CCC. It's just a big, big adventure. I'm planning to finish and enjoy. So we have the beautiful Mont Blanc behind us. We're just finishing off our shakeout run with Lloyd and Ben and Sarah. Well, have you got, have you got something big coming up then? No. Just a little, a little jog. A little loop around a mountain. <laughs> this is Holly Rush, who did TDS in 30 hours last year. I was get one 30 hours? Okay. But now I'm doing their Instagram takeover, which I think is actually worse. <laughs> <laughs> Rather on UTMB. The first race of the week to finish is one very close to my heart. Last year, I completed the TDS after three years of trying, and I was in the crowd this year to watch Christian Meyer from Canada cross the line in first place. The next day, I was able to grab a few words with Christian at Moody's Cafe. This is Christian, uh, winner. Winner yes. of TDS yesterday. How are you feeling? Uh, great, actually. A little bit sore, obviously, but uh, yeah, super happy. I mean, obviously, it's such an uh, amazing day, big adventure. As an elite runner, how much of that, how much of those steep climbs and how much of that course are you actually running? Uh, hiking all the climbs, Yeah, more or less, and then running everything else. Christian, really, really well done. Fantastic. It was great to see you finish yesterday. Well Thank done. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Finishing a little later into the night in 12th place was Sage Canada, and he was very happy to chat with me once he'd crossed the line. He's won races all over the world. He's been on podiums all over the world. Sage, a real pleasure. Thank you. To have you here with us today. Thank you for joining us. Sage Canada. 
like 90, 98 miles this year. Oh, it's not, <laughs> it's not what they say it is. It's not. Yeah. Well, we time. we had to do a reroute, so we didn't, we didn't, we cut out some climbing. Well, maybe. Somebody just told me they found it harder to go up that road. Eight. That road is hard. That road is hard. What made it hard was the technical bits where it's really rocky. Yeah, yeah. Was coated in snow and slush and mud. Like we were running through like three inches sometimes. Oh my God. But it was good fun. It's part of the challenge. Like a lot of people say it is the hardest one of the week. Uh, everything's hard. <laughs> if you push yourself 100%, everything, every distance race is hard. But racing in the U.S. is totally different than racing over here. <laughs> the trails go straight up here in the mountains. This is like. Like real rugged mountaineering. It was a tough one tonight. Ah, I was happy that turned out. It's fun. It's, it's great. You've Thank you. Well Thanks. Thanks. Good Thank job. You. Watching the elites is great, but it's equally rewarding to see your friends or even total strangers make it to the finish line in Chamonix. This is my running buddy Richard, finishing TDS in just under 35 hours. These are the runners who often spend twice as long out on course, in tough conditions, running through a second night. This is my mate Spencer, finishing in just under 43 hours. The joy, relief and shock of finishing is written all over his face. That's so hard. You are right. It's a hard run that, isn't it? Why do you think I DNF'd it so many times? Oh, did we go? Yeah. I said, that climb? Yeah. With all that mud as well. Throughout UTMB week, there are numerous media events, and I attended this one in the grounds of the Hotel Mont Blanc, where some of the elite runners were available for interview. I sat down with Tom Evans. Tom Evans, uh, why are you here again, mate? Come on. It's a good question. Um, a question I've been asking myself a lot. Um, yeah, after Western States, just, yeah, I recovered really well and just wanted to give myself the opportunity to be on another start line this year. And it's very difficult saying, turning down a place at UTMB, it's such an incredible race and an amazing atmosphere. Um, and you get a race against the best in the world in some of the most beautiful mountains in the world. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm here to have a great time. For five years, I've been watching Stephen run up and down the Swiss, French and Italian Alps, always with a sense of envious aspiration, but never the belief that I was good enough to do it myself. But having been lucky in the UTMB lottery, this year it was finally my turn to experience the magic of the mountains. It's approximately quarter to five in the morning. I'm waiting to board the coach to Switzerland. Um, and the start time is about quarter past eight for the lead runners. There's three waves, I'm in the final wave. Um, hopefully. I will get to Chamonix on foot tonight. How are you feeling? Bit of a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Bit emotional. I uh, feel a fraud to be here. I need some self-confidence. Let's get ready to rock and roll, everybody. Still feeling like I didn't belong. I lined up at the start with a goal of simply doing my best to avoid the cutoffs. All I wanted was to make it to that iconic finish line in Chamonix and make my family proud. From humble steps to soaring skies, this is your moment, everybody. Have a great day, have a great race, and we shall see you all in Chamonix. This first section is very runnable trails. So that's an hour and 15 minutes and we are through the first checkpoint. Wow. 
welcome to the Swiss mountains. I have to say I am delighted at this very runnable path. Um, the first climb there were some very steep sticky sections. As the race progressed I grew in confidence a little. I wasn't in last place. I was ahead of the cutoffs, and although it was tough, I was actually climbing mountains. Almost three hours in, this second climb is absolutely killing me. But look at these views. So many people have overtaken me on this descent. I just can't move over stony ground and no one week on this terrain. I think we're about five hours in. Who knows? I'm absolutely shattered. Having negotiated the first two climbs, we dropped down to the checkpoint at Trient and prepared for the longest, steepest climb of the day, up to Col de Balm at 2,200 metres above sea level. I am somewhere on the third climb. I have no idea how far in or what time of day it is or who I am. It's a beautiful view. See the runners making their way across these rocks and I'm heading up over there it is really difficult without a doubt this is the hardest climb I've ever done but I'm still moving reaching the checkpoint it was incredibly windy and I felt a little light-headed with the altitude but I was really proud to have made it to the top and I knew I just had one more big climb to come. Looking across at Mont Blanc. Hello Alan. Alan did the UTS 50k with us and he's in our yeah. video. I am it. Just behind your head, on your shoulder Steve, nodding with you in agreement how busy it was. He's doing the Centurion 50 slam this year. I am. Last one in two weeks. Chilton Hills. Don't wait. He's also a fellow Zwifter. Indeed. And proud owner of a Noble Pro. Love my Noble Pro. Can't get enough of it. Go Noble Pro! Go Noble Pro! <laughs> Coming into you, Argentier. Argentier is the penultimate checkpoint on the OCC route. By now, I knew I could finish. I was no longer worried about cutoffs. In fact, I'd been gaining time at each checkpoint, and as I ran into Argentier, I could feel the finish line was close. All I had to do was make it up and down one more mountain. The climb to La Flagère is tough and you can see the ski lifts at the top of the climb from a long way out. It seems to take forever to get to the final checkpoint. I didn't stop when I got there. I just wanted to see my family who I knew were waiting at the bottom of the only section of the course I know well, the final descent into Chamonix. When I hit the tarmac at the bottom of the hill, Stephen told me to look around and take in the atmosphere as I ran through the town. I'm glad he did, because it would be so easy to let it all happen around me without truly appreciating it. Running in along the river, my children running next to me, friends and strangers cheering my name as I passed by. Mont Blanc ever present in front of me, watching over me as the light faded. I was going to make it across the line before nightfall. I was going to make it!
took a few moments to get myself together before going to collect my coveted gilet. Oh, that was too small. Oh, no. I'm sure it will fit. And that's the story of my 2023 OCC adventure. Yeah, where have you been for the past few hours? I've been waiting for my dinner. I went to Switzerland this morning. Did you? I did. <laughs> Whilst Victoria was still out on the mountain running OCC, I was able to watch the elites finishing and managed to catch a word with British ultra running legend Robbie Simpson coming home in sixth place. Well, how was that then? Hard. But under five hours, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it was fast. It was really competitive. So, yeah, happy with that. Sixth place this time. Were you hoping for an improvement? Did you know it was going to be really quick? Yeah, I mean, I thought I might be a little bit further off on a good day, but like, I think the field was just really strong and very tight um, today at the front. I just didn't quite have the legs in the last two hours. Well done, well done. Brilliant, brilliant. And then, before I knew it, it was time for the main event. Just walking to the start line of UTMB, feeling, well, nervous as you might expect, but excited, really excited to get going. As you can see, it's absolutely packed here. And this is what it's like every UTMB, it's just so crowded at the start. And we're nowhere near the start of the race at the moment, we're nowhere near the start line. The air fractured in anticipation. The atmosphere charged as the thunderclap rang out across the square. There's one minute, 30 seconds to go before the start of UTMB. This is the most iconic race in the world. This is the place to be. This is the best race you will ever run, the best race in the world. And we are starting in one minute from now. Welcome to Film My Run. We're gonna run 105 miles all the way around Mont Blanc. This journey started seven years ago when I decided I wanted to run this. And this is the day. Now is the time. Let's go and do this. Come on. Good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. Good luck. The first eight kilometers is a relatively easy, but incredibly congested whirlwind of a run to Les Uch. Stu, did you say, I've got you on camera now, did you say it's your first time? First time with you, Timmy, yes. Got in, lucky dip, going for the big dance. Nice one. Can't wait, mate. Come on, Steve. Hello, buddy. Well done, buddy. Thank you. Right, who's this then? It's Paul Fairclough, I live in Guildford. Uh, I've been allowed out for the weekend by my wife, who's at home, <laughs> with my daughter, um, running with Stephen. We've had a great time. We're what, a couple of miles in, three miles in. Yeah. Um, so I reckon we've broken the back a bit by now, <laughs> personally, you know. <laughs> nearly finished. Nearly finished, it's a stroll from here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just aiming to beat the cutoffs. Just have a good time, good weekend. And meet lots of people, hopefully. <laughs> This is eight kilometers in, 
at Les Oeufs. So first aid station, just top up water bottles really. We haven't done any climbing yet. It's basically mostly flat -ish. Get going. Bottles filled up. There's the leaders. We're 10k in in an hour and a quarter. Yep. It's Sarah in a lovely view behind her. How you feeling? All right, so far it's early days, but <laughs> fine. I don't really know what to say. Yeah. yeah, it was nice to bump into Sarah after what was one of the most intense starts to a race I've ever experienced. It took until the start of the first climb before I began to relax. kilometers in two hours in the first evening of UCMB and that is Mont Blanc in the evening sunlight looking absolutely beautiful we are halfway to Saint-Gervais and it'll be head torches on at Saint-Gervais I imagine so far everything's good <laughs> Okay, this is San Gervais. So I've got to fill up my bottles here, get some water and get some food because I'm quite, I'm quite hungry. So San Gervais at 21, 21 kilometers in. Hi guys. Cheers buddy. Okay, so bottles filled up. San Gervais is absolutely packed with people. I've had some coffee, some coke, and I've got some chocolate to eat. And uh, we're gonna start our next climb. Thank you. So I don't know if you can see what complete melee is in here. It's absolutely packed with people everywhere, trying to get food, drinks, fighting their way through. And it's really difficult to get what you need. But I've got soup, um, some bars. I've had Coke, I've filled my water bottles up. And I think we're about five hours into the run and 20 miles in. This is Le Contamine, by the way. Le Contamine aid station. Runners can meet their crew here as well. So this is a changing area and place where they can uh, sit down for a few minutes. I'm not gonna sit down, I'm just gonna get going. So this is pretty awesome. They did this last year, the Hoka Tunnel and it's pretty cool. So we're not far off starting a massive climb. 1,300 metre climb coming up in a minute. It's going to take us a good few hours to do. Um, I've been having a little bit of a low period, just not feeling strong you know and knowing so far to go but I don't know I think it's I think it's normal I think I'll get over it and uh, we'll be on our way feeling good again soon hopefully so that was the Hoka tunnel good wasn't it
So this is Balm. We are about 41 kilometers in and uh, we're climbing it. This is a really big climb. We're not even halfway up it here. But yeah, 41 kilometers in and it's around one o'clock, five to one in the morning. So a little bit of bread and cheese. Let's get going back up this hill now. When you come to run the Mont Blanc UTMB 100 miler, try not to get any grandiose ideas about it being just a lovely run through the mountains because much of the time what it is is a very silent, monotonous grind up a 20% incline through the night with your head torch on. That's what we're doing at the moment. Nobody's speaking. We're all just concentrating on breathing and getting up the hill. So here we are at the top of Col de Bonhomme, 1300 meter climb. It is snowing up here. Oh no, it's not snowing, but there's snow on the ground up here. So we've been trudging up a few uh, meters in deep snow, which has been really cool. And then we've got a 900 meter descent now from Col de Bonhomme. Well, that was a pretty awesome climb. Fantastic it was. I mean, really tiring, but awesome nonetheless. Look, here's the snow. Right, let's get on then. Right, 50k in, in nine and a half hours. Still on this descent. Got about 370 meters of descent left over about 2.2 kilometers to do. Loads of people are passing me because I'm just very tentative on the descents. I'm not too bad on the climbs. I'm tending to pull away from a few people on climbs, but on descents, I'm just absolutely rubbish. So, but we're just keeping going. I don't know if you can see the lights down the hill there. So nine hours and 30 minutes is half past three in the morning. The checkpoint at the bottom of the hill closes at quarter past five. We should get there on time and then it should be hopefully head torches off. Uh, so some people are getting random bad checks uh, to make sure they've got all the right kit. And here we are. Arriving at Le Chapeau, I was feeling more fatigued than I wanted and doubting my ability somewhat given how slow I was on the last descent. But I'd made the cutoff and we were now 50 kilometers into the race with the first two climbs behind us. See how crowded it is again. I left Le Chapeau as dawn was beginning to break and we headed off to start the third ascent following a train of head torches all marching doggedly up to Col de la Seine. It's uh, daytime, although we're covered in cloud, uh, so you can't see a thing, but it is Col de la Seine at 60k, although my watch says 63. We've got an 800 metre descent down to La Combeau, which closes at 10 o'clock this morning. It's now just after, it's about quarter to seven in the morning. arrived at Lac Combal aid station after a pretty huge climb down, 600 metres down. Now we're not even at halfway yet, so we've got another 450 metre climb to negotiate before we get to the descent into Cormier. 
So still a long way to go to halfway, but we might have a little rest here because I'm shattered. Amazing views. It's just incredible. The scenery is fantastic, but yeah, it's hard to appreciate when you're really tired. Cut off here is at 10 o'clock, by the way, and it is uh, about quarter to nine. This is a very runnable flat section just before we start the next climb. I'm finding the climbs really tough. I've just thrown up. I had some soup at uh, Lac Combal and it was just, it was just too salty. And I brought it all back up. But my stomach does feel better now for that. This really set a tone that was to continue for the rest of the race. Stomach issues, feeling nauseous, trying to eat and throwing up. Rinse and repeat this for the next 50 miles. So we've arrived at Arete de Montfavre. We've got nine kilometers down the hill to Cormoyer. That climb has killed me. If you recognize this, by the way, you get up here on TDS as well, but in the opposite direction. amazing with the cloud. We've been going for 16 hours and 9 minutes, 74 kilometres done, so we're still uh, a little way off halfway, but uh, nice long downhill now, hopefully it's not, I seem to remember it's not too gnarly from coming up. And we're just coming into Cold Chakru aid station. And you may remember this from the TDS because we do this on our first climb. In the opposite direction to this, we're going down into Cormier. TDS starts in Cormier and comes up here. 49 miles done. Not really much point in stopping here, to be honest just straight down the hill and uh, there's the mountain but I know you're all getting a bit bored of the mountain now so we're about to arrive at Cormier which is the big drop bag aid station so I'll get my drop bag I'm not feeling very good, I have to say. Stomach is really playing up and legs are shot. But I'm going to keep going. I mean, we're not even halfway yet. I will keep going, hopefully. Stomach will settle down. So we're now in Italy. Cormier is like the Chamonix of Italy. It's on the other side of Mont Blanc. There's Mont Blanc up there, and it's where the tunnel comes out. So the Mont Blanc tunnel between Cormier and Chamonix. Okay, this is Cormier. It's kind of halfway, but it's not halfway. Drop bags, crew helping people out. What's your name? I'm Gary. Gary, yeah. you live in Brighton? Yeah. You follow the channel? <laughs> Thank you very much, buddy. Take care. That is Cormier done, that is the drop bag done. So now we have an 800 meter climb up to Refuge Betone. Five kilometer distance. By the way, Sarah Place is ahead of me. She's, she's absolutely killing it today. She's uh, halfway up the hill already to Betone. So good for Sarah Place. Ben's dropped out, unfortunately. Ben Parks. Just soaked myself because we have a long climb now. Ooh. Lovely cold water. <laughs> this is a killer climb out of Cormier. Still got 400 metres of elevation to go, two kilometres. Everyone's fighting their own demons now. There's no cut off at Refuge Betoni at the top. We've got to get to Arnova by 6.15 tonight. Hopefully we'll get to the top of this hill by about three o'clock and then we've got three hours 
to run there. It's nice and flat. I'm not sure how far it is. The other thing is at least we're in the shade because it's baking hot as well. So this is Refuge Bertone. Top of the beautiful climb. The run between Bertone and Arnouva is arguably the most beautiful and impressive section of the UTMB course, and it certainly lifted my spirits. But as well as throwing up, I was now burning up and struggling to maintain a decent pace in the heat. All I wanted was to lie down in a river. Lucky then that the perfect spot was just around the corner. Well, look, I've lost some time, but going full on in there was absolutely, totally refreshing. And I've really needed it because I am struggling. The hot weather has done me. I am absolutely dying here. And um, the, the other problem that I've got is that my, my stomach is all over the place. I don't know what to eat to keep my stomach settled. I've thrown up twice and I can't eat or drink anything really. What even water is making me nauseous. So we've arrived in Arnova. I really want to quit, but I know my wife and kids would be so disappointed and you know Victoria finished Richard finished Sarah Place is going to finish just feel like I owe it to them to, to try and get it done we've got time I've got time to to get to um, the next checkpoint which is La Foulie it's a big old climb up to the highest point of the race, which is um, Grand Col Ferret. 950 metre climb now to do that. But we don't have to be in La Foulie till 10.30 tonight. So we've got four or five hours to do this. Um, so I'm just going to finish my food and slowly walk out and try and get myself together because I feel terrible. I, feel I can't keep the food down. I'm eating a bit of cheese and bread now just to see if that will stay down. I just can't eat anything too hot. I'm hoping also that it'll cool down as the night approaches and, and I'll feel better. Okay, time to go. I've had soup, I've had peanuts, I've had bread and cheese. All of that seems to have settled. So, if I just walk it out now for the next 10 or 15 minutes and we'll see how we go. Cut off there is at 6.15. It's now, it's around 25 to 6. Here we are, summit of Grand Col Ferret. Yeah. Made it. Allez, bravo. Thank you. Allez, bravo. Merci. Beautiful place. <coughs> and we have a view this time. See, 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 it was completely mist covered in 2018. Right, let's get down 
Let's get down this mountain. It's a long way down. The descent to La Foulie did indeed take forever, but getting over Grand Col Ferret felt like a milestone in the race and gave me a new determination not to lie down and not to be beaten. Okay, we've arrived at La Foulie. Um, it's 14 kilometres to the next aid station at Champagne Lac, which is, just seems horrible to me. Get on with it. I am finishing this. I've decided now I'm finishing this whether it takes me forever or not. Okay, let's get out of here. Time to go to Champagne Lac. 30 minutes left. It's a pretty flat route. Um, apart from the last bit, which is a horrendous climb. Right, where do we go? It was a little cooler now, and I was able to run much of the distance between La Foulie and Champagne Lac. Unfortunately, the climb at the end dragged me back to despair, and I reached the checkpoint dead on my feet and feeling nauseous yet again. So this is Champagne Lac. Um, I've just been sick. I had some fizzy water threw up everywhere. Well, I threw up in the beer. Uh, but I've, I've had some um, pasta bolognese, which actually has gone down okay. It's packed. There is one hour till cut off here, so one hour before everyone wants to get out. So I've got three hills to climb now. All three are around about 800 metres climbing. So. It's going to be a long night and the last one will be in the daylight, I imagine. So, where are we? It's uh, one, 1.30 in the morning, so we've got an hour on that cut off there. And the next one doesn't close till 8am and I'm hoping we'll be there well before that. And we have about 28 miles left, I think. It's a beautiful clear night. We have made it to pretty much the top of uh, the first climb. I remember when I did CCC, I pretty much sat in exactly the same position to give you an update. Uh, it's, it's just too hard to, to update whilst climbing through the, the woods and it's just really difficult. <laughs> As I made my way to Trient, the sun began to rise on day three, and with just two climbs remaining, the end was becoming more tangible by the hour. So after a very long descent, we are just checking in at Trient. Here we go. Hi. So it is getting light. It's about ooh, half six in the morning, two more climbs to go, and then it's down into Chamonix. I have thrown up again. Race time is currently 36 hours and 36 minutes. And it's gonna be another at least six hours, I would have thought. Okay, here is Triant. I didn't want to tempt fate, but the new day brought new hope for my stomach issues. I was starting to feel a little better. I was still completely shattered, of course, and the rising temperatures weren't going to do anything for my speed over the ground. But it was something to be positive about in a race littered with so many problems. We're at a small stop called Seps which is uh, about three quarters of the way up the climb, a bit more than that actually, we're nearly, nearly at the top of this climb. At the top of the climb now, out of Trient, so down to Valocene, beautiful day. It's about 10 to nine, hoping to get down to the ground level at Valocene by about 10. Quarter past ten. Some people have been saying they're a bit worried about the cutoff at uh, La Flagere, but I can't imagine it's going to be a problem. 
Suddenly, on the descent into Valacine, I was full of life, full of positivity and confidence. I was excited at the thought that in a few hours I would be home. In a few hours I would cross the best finish line in the world. One last push, four more hours, one final climb. How hard could it be? Okay, we have reached Varsi, so this is our last stop. And then it's just up over one more mountain and back down into Chamonix. You can see here we've got to get to La Flegere by 2.45. Uh, La Flegere is uh, just here. Um, we've also got Col de Montet, which is there. Um, so up there and basically down. I went to a shop actually before this and got coffee and a Perrier uh, because I'm just not getting on with anything that I find at these day stations. I have got myself some apple there. I am feeling, I'm feeling great now. I mean, my feet are in bits, they're wrecked, but um, generally I'm feeling good. Right, final climb. Let's get this finished. Sure. Let's do it. So let's kiss Valacine goodbye. Um, yeah, like, like I said, I had, I, as I came down the bottom of the hill, there was a cafe. So I got Perrier and put some lemon in it because they didn't have lemon Perrier. So I just put some lemon from the aid station in the Perrier. Here we go. I can't wait for this. I cannot wait. We've got a big climb now though. I mean, it's still a 900 meter climb, but who cares? We're going home. We're going to get another gilet. We're going to cross that amazing finish line again. And we're going to cross it with people there for the second year running. So that's awesome as well. Simon? Um, Huddersfield. And what are you doing in Chamonix? Uh, I've come out to spectate, but I also just complete on Friday, I completed the soft UTMB. Yeah, so I did the full UTMB course for uh, four days, staying in refuges. Oh, lovely. Thank you for being a, a watcher of my videos. No worries. This guy's been running UTMB dressed like this for the whole time. You okay? <laughs> so I'm just pushing a bit up the final hill to make absolutely sure that we don't miss the cutoff at La Flegere, which is at 2.30. We've got three hours, but I just want to be sure. So I'm just going a bit quicker than I might normally go. So do you remember this from early in the morning of CCC in 2018? So we've been sent this alternative route again and we've got, uh, we've got all these rocks to deal with at the end of the race. Not quite the end of the race, we've still got to get up to La Flagere and then down again. And I really shouldn't be holding the camera while I'm trying to negotiate these rocks. Very bad idea, accident waiting to happen. On the way up the final climb, I was surprised and delighted to bump into Herbert, a friend from Zwift. He'd been running CCC earlier, but was forced to pull out with breathing issues. We spent a few minutes walking together before I made the final push up to La Flagere. My earlier exuberance had faded somewhat as the sun had drained the little energy I had mustered. Finally arrived at La Flagere. That was such hard work, that last climb. Thank you. La Flagere aid station. I'm not going to get anything. I might go in the cafe. So yeah, I'm not going to go in there. I'm going to go to the cafe if it's open. Reaching the foot of the descent into Chamonix is an incredible feeling. Just a couple of kilometres of tarmac and if you finish in daylight, plenty of people lining the streets to cheer you home. I do feel sorry for the faster runners who finish this race in the dead of night. But right here, right now, this is the only way to finish this race. Completely exhausted, but pumped with adrenaline and surrounded by like-minded souls who want nothing more than to see you achieve your dreams. Best finish line in the world. 
Run if you jam any town centre. That's the grassroots of running, and that's a community. I love these moments. Job well and truly done. Come on! <laughs> you don't get a medal or a buckle at UTMB, you get a gilet. I'll tell you what, Bloom well earned that today and yesterday. Yeah! <laughs> and the day before. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Some 24 hours earlier, and Victoria had witnessed history as Courtney De Walter won UTMB for the third time, completing the triple crown of victories at UTMB, Hard Rock, and Western States, all in the same year. She crossed the line this year in 23 hours, 29 minutes, and was 25th overall out of over 1,700 runners. But for me, the week's most emotionally charged finish was that of Jim Wormsley. Having literally moved to France to realise his dream and having fallen short so many times, it must have been incredible finally to not only win, but beat Killian's course record, finishing in 19 hours 37 minutes. What a race, what a week, and we'll all be back again in 2024.